Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. First down for Procise, and now is it going to catch him? 91 yards! And that is a backbreaker for Paul Johnson. Drew set the tone in the way we play defensively in the first half. The way we need to play defensively. Playing as one, playing together, playing with one heartbeat, playing with everything that he had. Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. I'm Jack Nolan. Coach Kelly's 2015 Fighting Irish have used a consistent formula to become the first team in the nation since 2012 to open the season with three wins over opponents from Power Five conferences. That formula is made up of a balanced offensive attack that has included three straight 200-yard rushing performances combined with a defense that ranks 29th in the nation in total defense after three games against quality competition. There is no question Notre Dame's victory over Georgia Tech in a game the Irish entered as underdogs was a total team effort. But it was the defense that made the biggest impression on observers both on and off the field. You gotta give it to the defense today, you know, just, um, you know, just watching Georgia Tech, you know, on TV, we, they're a real explosive team. They have a great quarterback and, you know, our defense did a great job holding them in, in check. Coach Van Gorder, Coach Elliott spent a ton of time this offseason, um, the rest of the coaching staff, and they did a great job of understanding what we needed to do uh, to kind of give Georgia Tech a different look. And so uh, we did some things maybe that they hadn't seen uh, seen before. I think that we just lined up and played, and we were just had a great resilience about us. We weren't going to give up on third down, and I think that really helped. People don't understand how hard it is to, to you know, defend that sort of an offense. And when you see every last guy out there executing exactly what his assignment is, it's, it's unbelievable. They're all flying around, and I, and I like to say that it's like, it's like making music. Everyone has their job, and when everyone's working good, it's a great melody that's out there. Coming up on Inside Notre Dame Football. Well, I think any time you beat the number 14 ranked team in the country, that's a good first start. This year, I'm thinking, you know, I'm coming as a running back, and I'll be behind Tari, and we'll be like splitting, splitting carries. And then he goes down, and then it was like, wow, I'm about to touch the ball a lot at running back. That's a tear! Every play, every snap, right from the start! Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football is also sponsored by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Cadillac, Canon, Xfinity, Meyer, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. Here's a pitch. What a tackle by Notre Dame for a loss. An open field hit by Drew Tranquil. Regardless of how well prepared a defense is for the triple option, it normally takes a few series for them to adjust to the speed of a well-run triple option. But your team started the game with consecutive three and outs against Georgia Tech, and that had not happened this year. They hadn't been sent to the sidelines three and out once until your game. Yeah, I thought we got off to a great start, um, and, and it starts inside out. You have to have great line play, and it started with Isaac Rochelle and Jerry Tillery and Joe Schmidt it's inside out, taking away the fullback. Full take away the fullback, and you run and rally to the quarterback and pitch, and, and we were able to do that. But it started inside, and uh, those three and outs were essentially um, taking away the, the fullback, and, and really those guys up front did a great job. And it may have started in the offseason. Yeah. You kind of gave Bob Elliott a doctoral uh, thesis project to go really study uh, the triple option. What were you looking for from that? Well, really what we're trying to do is, is our system and what we had been doing and, and then kind of compare notes with, with other programs that have had some success with the triple option and see if there were some common threads there uh, that we could build off of and maybe some things that, that could enhance what we were doing. And, 
I think that's what Bob did a great job of, is that uh, he didn't go with the idea of um, we're going to change a lot of things, but what can we do to supplement what we already have and maybe some ideas that can maybe confuse the quarterback a little bit, change some things up. Uh, and I think he did a great job of, of, of getting all that information and then bringing it back to, to Brian Van Gorder uh, and Brian then um, getting it into our defensive system. And I think, it was, uh, I think it was well executed. This season is really becoming the season of next man in. Drew Tranko playing so well for you. You're losing for the year in a freak injury. Then Matthias Farley comes in on his very first series. He forces a fumble and ends up playing a great game. He played well, he did. Um, you know, I think he probably would have liked to play the last touchdown pass a little bit better, but he did some really good things. You know, he came in, as you mentioned, caused that first fumble and then made some good plays on the pitch, played aggressively, uh, but you know, he's a seasoned veteran. We count on him and, and trust him to come in and play well and he did that for us. Here's a long ball of Fuller. He still beats him. Downfield, it's caught. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Kaiser to Fuller, delivers again. Evaluate the first start of Deshaun Kaiser. Well, I think anytime you beat the number 14 ranked team in the country, that's a good first start. His command of the offense was, was excellent. I thought his overall leadership was excellent. And we've talked about this. It is loud now at home games. I think the construction has definitely changed We'll even consider going with some uh, nonverbal cadence at home, which is unusual. Um, but his communication needs to get better in his cadence. Threw the ball okay. Uh, even though he threw it at 68% completion, he could throw it a little bit better. I think a lot that he can take from this first start and get so much better from. And it helps to have good guys to throw to. He has a number of them. Well, he's got good players to throw to. And when you got a guy like Will Fuller who can take the top off of coverage, that helps because you just throw it out there and he goes and runs and catches it. Then you've got a running back who can go the distance. Uh, you've got an offensive line that can give you the time. Um, that's a pretty good supporting cast in your first start. Let's talk about Fuller's touchdown, the 46-yard catch. Well, I, it was interesting. It was a, a third down and long situation, and they had been bringing a lot of pressure. So we maxed out the protection. It was a three-man route, and they went to double zone. Deshaun did a very good job of holding the safety inside. The ball got caught up in the wind. The defensive back kind of lost it, threw it to the back shoulder. Will made a nice adjustment to it for a touchdown. And defenses are trying to pay attention to C.J. Procise. 198 rushing yards plus the 91-yard touchdown. The longest run ever in Notre Dame Stadium history. Amazing. I don't think that we were going to ever see something like that and ever in, in Notre Dame history in the stadium. But uh, great run. He was very patient, um, set up his blocks, and, you know, just he's got great speed, too. You know, I, I turned to Autry Denson, his running back coach, who's our all-time leading runner, uh, rusher, as you know, and I turned to him. I said, did you think he was going to get caught? He goes, Coach, we don't get caught. <laughs> Not when we get in the open. So it was, a, it was nice to see it. The decision to move C.J. Procise to running back this season has already paid huge dividends for the Fighting Irish. It has taken C.J. just three games to become one of the most important skill players on the team. How important? Procise currently ranks fifth in the nation with 451 rushing yards, 155 of those coming in front of C.J.'s friends and family in Notre Dame's victory at Virginia. It's that Procise strength right there all day. That's how we're going to do UVA. That's how we're going to do everybody. National championship, CJ Pro Side, Notre Dame. Let's go. We're, we're just excited. It's, it's be playing in Virginia for the first time, and you know, we're very excited. And he's getting the ball a lot and seems to be doing well out there. Very well. Yes, he's running and making people miss and scare me to death. I keep seeing go down and come back up. Here's a handoff straight ahead. First down, Notre Dame, and knocked down his Pro Side. Turns the corner. What a running back. Hit hard as he gets to the 30 yard line. 17 carries for you, 155 yards. You had all your, your former coaches, family in the stands. You gotta be having some fun playing running back, man. Yeah, it definitely feels great. I mean, it feels like a natural move. I mean, last night I felt like I was feeling, feeling blocks more and feeling uh, holes open up for me. Sean Kaiser looks like he's gonna hand off. He does. 
Running hard, inside the 20, inside the 10, head for pay dirt, in for a touchdown for Notre Dame is C.J. Procise. So you start your career here playing safety, and then you go to receiver where you started to dominate, and then you kind of make this transition to running back. But I was concerned you weren't going to get to touch the ball enough because Tari and Folston is there, and you become the one guy. Talk, just talk about the whole process. How crazy is this? You know, it's um, been for you. It's been, you know, it's, it's been, it's been wild, and you, I kind of like, kind of go every season, like not, not really knowing like what's, what's gonna happen next. And this year, I'm thinking, you know, I'm coming in as a running back, and I'll be behind Tari, and we'll be like splitting, splitting carries, and then he goes down, and then I was like, wow, I'm about to touch the ball a lot at running back. Coming back home to play, I'm sure he had uh, numerous ticket requests, but he's come out here today. And he's run like he's been the starting back all the time. Take, just take me through the, the entire last 83 yards that ended up winning you guys the game from your perspective. Okay, well, uh, so we go out there, we go out there knowing like we, are, we got four downs to get a first down. So just get one first down and we're, we're moving from there. If the play where Deshaun started rolling out, and he, I, was, I was just like confident ball, like, hey, I'm open. <laughs> like, and then we got there, and then I seen the last play. I don't, honestly, I don't even know what the last play was called. I just know I had to block somebody. <laughs> so, uh, and then I see somebody come free off the edge. I, I make a, you know, like a little, get a little piece of him. And I see Deshaun just launch it, and I just see Will, and I just put my hands up, and I just know it was, I was like, that's game. I knew it. I hardly remember any other, but I do remember putting my hands up saying, this is game right here. Hands off, and break it. Notre Dame in the open field. On his way, he could be gone. The race is on, and CJ Procise is a clear winner. He hits the tape, the goal line, touchdown, Notre Dame, 91 yards. First car you ever drove? A green Mercury Villager minivan. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? I'm one of seven children. What is your favorite spot at Notre Dame? The Grotto. In your wildest dreams, did you ever think you would be a Notre Dame captain? Not in my wildest. Why does it feel like to be a Notre Dame captain? It's the greatest accomplishment of my life, it's the greatest honor of my life up to this point. Your thoughts on the future video board at Notre Dame Stadium? I think it's long overdue, it's gonna be awesome. The program training led by Marines. Uh, it was just a, a huge opportunity for us to come together, it was an incredible experience. Navy SEAL Marcus Luttrell. A living legend. Player on the team most like you? Joe Schmidt. Toughest player to tackle on the team? Tarian Folston. Hardest hitter on the team? Jared Grace. Best singer on the team? Corey Robinson. Best dancer on the team? Tori Hunter, Jr. Best comedian on the team? Chase Hounsell with doses, doses. Best thing about playing football for Notre Dame? To be a part of one of the greatest story traditions in history. Matthias Farley, you've completed the 60 second drill in Inside Notre Dame Football. Thank you. Appreciate it, thank you. In his first season as Notre Dame's head coach, Brian Kelly often talked about the next man in whenever an injury occurred. He wanted every player on the roster to head into every game prepared to step in for the man in front of him at a moment's notice. It has become part of the foundation of Kelly's Notre Dame program, and that is a good thing because there has never been a moment during Coach Kelly's six seasons with the Irish when this philosophy was tested more than in Notre Dame's road win at Virginia a victory that was brilliantly chronicled by fighting Irish media on Watch ND. Let it go out there today. Let it go for each other and for Notre Dame. Yo, my brothers, we go out there and we play with the most energy. And let's play the game from the start to the very end that exact way. Let's attack. Every play, every snap. Right from the start. Our Lady, Queen of Victory. Right from the cross. And the question becomes, is Notre Dame a playoff team this year? If Malik Zaire plays the way he did against Texas, the offense will be just fine. And Notre Dame is setting up for the field goal try again. Sean Kaiser's the holder. They go to a pitch play. Touchdown, Notre Dame! How about that for Kaiser? His first touchdown pass in college comes from a forward flip. Uh, that, was a lot of, that was a lot of YouTube fake field goal film to figure out how to do it. Virginia is thwarted with relative ease by the Notre Dame defense. Drew Tranquil. The fullback read out, and the guy followed him. Yeah, real. Okay. That's what I was trying to say, because they were trying to run ISO. Here now is a trick play. They go for the long ball. Receivers open. Virginia takes the lead. We're Notre Dame. We ride. We go to zeros, and we suck the lifestyle. We're on the road, and we're behind. 
Let's find out what we're about. Here's the test right now to find out what this team's about. Let's go find out right now. Turner catches it. Notre Dame, 61 yards. And Zaire runs straight ahead. On a first down, he gets ahead for a four-yard gain. Uh-oh. Zaire is down. But it does not look good. Yeah, he has a uh, he has a fractured uh, ankle, and uh, he'll be out for the season. So Deshaun Kaiser, a sophomore from Central Catholic in Toledo, Ohio, comes in to quarterback the Fighting Irish. Kaiser looks like he's going to hand off. He does. Running hard. In for a touchdown. So now it's important to see how Virginia responds. Touchdown. Notre Dame falls behind 27 to 26. Come on, man. Notre Dame needs two yards to keep the drive going. 120 left to play. Here's Kaiser, calls his own number. Kaiser gets there! I thought his composure was good. His pocket presence was really good. Time is running out on Notre Dame. Here's a home run ball. Going for it is Fuller. He's out there. He catches it! Touchdown, Notre Dame! Looking for a miracle. Deshaun Kaiser to Fuller. They pull it out. Here we run, loser. Come on, man. There's no quit in this group. I've coached some teams where they've just laid down. They just said the game's over. And we lost the league today, but Deshaun Kaiser got his opportunity to step up. You don't know when your time is going to come. Deshaun didn't know his time was going to be counted on. We got to move on the next man in. Does everybody got it? Yes, sir. sir. It's time now for the experts at TireRack.com question of the week for Coach Kelly. This week's question comes from Chuck Anderson of Manhattan Beach, California. Coach, why are you not using your tight ends more this season? Let's see, we threw to him to open the game, uh, had a catch, and then um, you know we had him down the middle of the field one time. So I think we are getting our tight ends involved. They are young. When, when Durham Smythe, uh, you know, down, now Tyler Luatua and Alizé and Nick Wish are all young players. So um, they'll get their chances. But, um, you know, we also got to get the ball out more to a Torrey Hunter, for example, who's only got three catches right now, and Corey Robinson. So um, they'll get their chances. Next up for the Irish, Notre Dame's first ever meeting with UMass. The Minutemen are 0-2, but took a good Temple team down to the closing seconds in Foxborough on Saturday and feature a passing attack that is averaging just under 322 yards per game. They had Temple beat. Uh, Temple uh, kicked a field goal with 12 seconds left to win, and of course Temple has wins over Cincinnati and Penn State. So we already know that UMass is going to be a a formidable opponent and they've got a very nice quarterback tall athletic kind of like uh, the kid from Virginia who obviously gave us fits so uh, we, we've got some work to do. We of course will break down the UMass game on next week's show until then thanks so much for watching and as always go Irish. Inside Notre Dame football with Brian Kelly is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame football is also sponsored by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Cadillac, Canon, Xfinity, Meyer, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS.